Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, yeah, of course, uh, it would be even nicer if I could, uh, you know, visit you in, if, if I could give this talk really in Utrecht, meet you all in person. But as we know, that's not possible these days. Um, yeah, so I decided to a uh, day to talk about a topic which, um, yeah, doesn't concern my most recent results, but which I thought would be maybe most interesting um, for your group in Utrecht. Um, so Ivaro told me also um, that you are interested in learning maybe about Catan connections and parabolic geometries, and, um, and that's a very good starting point for that, actually, I think, in my opinion. Okay, so recall that many geometric structures, important geometric structures in differential geometry are what you might call geometrically rigid, um, following some terminology of Gromov, in the sense that um, their Lie algebra of infinitesimal automorphisms is finite dimensional. Yeah, so infinitesimal automorphism means just vector fields whose flow acts by local automorphism of the given geometric structure, okay? So prominent examples of this are, of course, Riemannian manifolds or also um, conformal manifolds, so where you, by which I mean you don't have a metric, but you have rather conformal class of metrics. Or, um, for instance, another example is uh, projective structures, yeah, by which I mean an equivalence class of um, affine connections having the same um, geodesics as unparameterized curves. And more generally, as we will see, all kind of geometric structures which admit equivalent description as um, yeah, Qatar geometries. So what all these structures have in common is that if you look at the equations for um, uh, controlling infinitesimal automorphisms, they are all solutions to um, linear overdetermined systems of PDEs of so-called finite type. And this has immediately several consequences. So on one hand, finite type means that any automorphism is already determined by its finite jet in a single point. So by finitely many derivative at a point, which is exactly the reason why the automorphism groups of these structures are finite dimensional. Yeah? Another consequence is that since these automorphisms are solutions of overdetermined systems of PDEs, Generically, none of these structures has any automorphisms at all. Yeah? And that has the consequence, morally speaking, that structures which have large automorphism groups or say special types of automorphisms or flows and so on, are typically geometrically and topologically kind of constrained. Yeah? And often you can classify them because of that. Yeah? And uh, so, the so the aim of my talk is to um, present you several classification rigidity theorems along those lines um, and show you also how Catan connections can be used to prove these theorems. Yeah? So in particular, my talk will be also a little bit of an introduction in the concept of a Catan connection. Okay. Okay, suppose first, we are given a Riemannian manifold, then it's well known, the isometry group is a Lie group, a finite dimensional Lie group whose dimension is bounded by n times n plus one over two, yeah, in the dimension of the Riemannian manifold. And it's also known that if m is compact, then the isometry group is compact. And then a um, rigidity theorem um, of the type I just described, a well-known one is the following, namely suppose that your manifold is simply connected and uh, the dimension of this isometry group is the maximal possible one. Then your um, remaining manifold is up to maybe positive constant rescalings of the metric, isometric to either of the following spaces, namely the Euclidean space and with the Euclidean metric, um, the n-dimensional sphere yeah, with the standard metric, round metric, uh, or n-dimensional hyperbolic space, okay? So let me now remind you of the two standard arguments you give, say, in a, in a course on Riemannian geometry on how to see that a, the isometry group is finite dimensional, okay? So the first argue, standard argument is based on, on geodesics and the exponential map, yeah? So, so suppose you have an isometry, phi, say, yeah? Um, then it maps geodesics to geodesics, right? Any geodesics is a solution of a second order ODE, so it's determined by its one jet at a point. But that means if 
that if you know the one jet of phi at a point, you know what it does to all GD6 emanating from that point, which means that you can, from the one jet of phi at a point, you can locally recover the isometry locally. And that means that, say for connected, I mean manifold, that an isometry is already determined by its one jet at a point. Okay. The other argument is looking at things infinitesimally. So suppose you have a uh, a vector field, yeah, a, a killing field, yeah, um, vector field preserving the metric, yeah. Um, then you can start prolonging this equation, um, which um, by which I mean you somehow rewrite this, which is an overdetermined system on the vector field, as a first order system in closed form. So you introduce new variables for unknown derivatives until you can express all first derivatives of these new variables in terms of the variables themselves. Yeah? Okay, so remind you, a vector field xi yeah, is, is killing if, if you make it a one form by the metric and you differentiate this one form, which I indicated by lowering the index on the vector field via the levi civita connection, then this vector field is killing if and only if the symmetric part, which is indicated by these round brackets around the indices, is zero. Yeah, that's, that's well known. So otherwise put, we can say, the equivalently, of course, this derivative is um, skew, yeah? otherwise put it a two form on M, yeah? which I will denote by mu, introducing a new variable. And then if you differentiate one more time and skew of all three indices, you get an identity which expresses the second derivative of that of that killing field or that form corresponding to this to this vector field in terms of the curvature and the vector field itself. So otherwise put it it expresses the first derivative of mu in terms of the Riemann curvature tensor and xi. Okay. So in summary, so now the system has closed up, which means in summary I can say the following. So solutions of these killing equations are in bijective correspondence with sections xi mu yeah, of this bundle here. So one forms direct sum with two forms that are parallel for this connection I wrote down here. Yeah, that's, that's what I have proved yeah, for this linear connection on this vector bundle. Of, yeah. Note that this vector bundle, the standard fiber of this vector bundle yeah, is um, precisely as a vector space, yeah, the, the algebra of killing fields of our flat Euclidean space, yeah, of Euclidean space. Okay, that's what you get. Okay, so from this, you see immediately two things. So first of all, you see, since, since the, a parallel section of a connection is determined by its value at one point, from this, we see that a killing vector field, it's determined by its one jet at a point on this bijection. And also you see since of course the space of parallel sections of a linear connection is bounded by um, the dimension of the, the rank of the vector bundle, you immediately get that the space, um, yeah, the infinite, the, the dimension of the infinitesimal uh, or this, the dimension of the Lie algebra of killing fields is bounded by n times n plus one over two. Okay, this is, this is what we get, okay. So now let's suppose we are considering a conformal manifold. So rather than a metric, I have now an equivalence class of metrics yeah, um, where two metrics are equivalent if they differ by multiplication of a positive um, smooth function. In this case, it's also known that the automorphism group is a Lie group of finite dimension. The dimension is not bounded by this number here, n plus one times n plus two over two. And here things are even more rigid. So you can show that this dimension is attained only for the sphere. Yeah, for the conformal structure on the sphere. Yeah, so just to give you an idea how you get this number or why it is attained on the sphere, let me remind you that let's look at, of course, if you take Rn, yeah, and just the, the conformal structure used by the Euclidean metric, then the local conformal transformations, of course, they are just isometries. They are contained in there. And uh, then in addition, you have dilations and you have inversions, yeah, which are not defined on all of Rn, but that's why I wrote local. But however, if you, 
if you compactify by a point Rn, otherwise put you make it a sphere, yeah, um, then you can make also the inversions act. And that's how you see, I mean, remember that Rn and the sphere are by a stereographic projection conformally, um, locally conformally um, equivalent, yeah, conformally isomorphic. So, so the sphere can be seen as a conformal compactification of, of Rn um, uh, and uh, with the flat conformal structure. And so you can see how this number comes about. So if you add the numbers, what you need for translation, rotation, dilations, and inversions, you get this number. Okay, that's how you see this. Okay, so if I ask you now to, to prove this, yeah, you could try to repeat these two arguments I gave you from the case of Riemannian manifolds, okay? Okay, so the first argument, uh, but the problem is for the first argument, okay, this was based on having a, a canonical affine connection on the, on the tangent bundle, or if you want, if, of, on the principal connection on the first frame bundle of your manifold, immediately with Givita connection. Yeah, and then you had this GD6 and you use this, okay, some distinguished curves. So on a conformal manifold, you don't have a canonical connection on the first frame bundle. Yeah, I mean, you have the levi chivita connection of each of the metrics, yeah, but there's not a distinguished one, yeah, compared to the conformal structure. But you can show you have a, con a conformal manifold admits a canonical so called Caton connection, um, which you can see as somehow it admits a connection on a sub bundle of the second order frame bundle of the manifold, okay, a canonical one. So once you have that, yeah, uh, this connection, yeah, then you have get a notion similar to D6 of some class of distinguished curves, yeah, let's call them conformal to D6. They are solutions now to third order ODEs, yeah, and then repeating exactly the same argument as before, you, and of course they preserve the conformal transformations. You can show that any conformal transformation is determined by its two jet in a point, okay. Okay, so that's, this is how I can see this. Or we take the other approach. Um, we prolong the conformal killing equation. So we rewrite um, again the, the equation, we write down the equation. Yeah, it can be done with respect to the Levi Civita connection of any metric in a conformal class. The equation for your vector field to be a conformal transformation, which is an equation looking like that. And then you start prolonging it. The result of this is uh, that you get a connection. Uh, sorry, we get first, uh, you get a vector bundle, yeah, where the standard fiber is, uh, you can identify with the Lie algebra of conformal killing vector fields of the sphere, yeah, and you get a linear connection on there whose parallel sections are in one to one correspondence with this um, space of conformal killing vector fields. And this connection is very, very closely related to. The Caton connection, yeah? meaning the Caton connection can be seen as a connection on the same bundle, and the, the two of them they just differ by curvature. Yeah, there's some it's a little bit deformed by curvature. Yeah, but that's all. What I'm saying is, when you prolong this equation for infinitesimal automorphism, you kind of getting somehow the the Caton connection in some sense. Okay. Okay, and from this you can also see this. Okay. <clears throat> Now, in the study of conformal transformations, um, an important notion is that of this one, namely, you call a transformation essential, yeah, if it's not an isometry for a metric in a conformal class, okay? And you call a conformal structure essential if the whole automorphism group of the conformal structure doesn't preserve a metric, meaning it's not equal to any isometry group of some metric in the conformal class. Okay, so examples of an essential conformal structure are, for instance, Rn with the conformal structure of the Euclidean metric and the sphere with its standard conformal structure. That's our two examples. And then it was conjectures, conjectured in the 60s that that's actually the only ones yeah, who are there. And this was proved. So this conjecture is true and it was proved um, in uh, yeah, the first a compact case in the 70s, by independently by Farrell and Obata, and then 20 years later, the, the general case was proved again independently by Farrell and Schön using very different methods. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, 
And so this is this result you can see somehow as another manifestation of the rigidity of, of conformal structures. Yeah? Also a manifestation of this principle that I described at the beginning, namely that structures with large automorphism groups need to be very special. So why, why is this theorem representing this, this principle? Um, this is, for this, you have to make the following observation due to Alexe Alexevsky, namely, so he showed that a conformal structure is essential if and only if your automorphism group acts non-properly on M. Yeah? In particular, yeah, in the case where M is compact, this reads as uh, this, this um, conformal structure, compact conformal structure is essential if and only if the automorphism group is non-compact. Yeah? Which means this ferrand bata schoen theorem in the compact case reads as the only compact conformal manifold with a non-compact group of conformal transformations is the sphere. Yeah? And so from a topological point of view, you can say, having a compact manifold with a non-compact group of, of transformations, that's kind of big in some sense, okay? Okay, and, and the general case is, is in the literature usually hold up as a, as a theorem of, of strong geometric dynamic rigidity. So you make some weak assumption on the dynamics acting non-properly, um, but if you, in addition, assume that your structure preserves a conformal structure, you get strong um, geometric rigidity, okay? So this, there's a, this theorem, um, a, a proof using Catan connections was given by Charles Frances, who also um, generalized this to what is called um, yeah, parabolic geometries of rank one. Yeah? So yeah, I should say conformal, a conformal manifold, as I will say also later, is somehow the, yeah, the, uh, is an example of a parabolic geometry and one of the best studied ones, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, he generalizes to rank one parabolic geometries. Um, and um, yeah, and he also proved a infinitesimal version of this, yeah, which reads like this. So, um, so if you have a, a conformal killing vector field, yeah, then, okay, so first of all, I should say that if that vector field doesn't vanish on some open set, yeah, then it's necessarily inessential. That's, that's easy to see. You can easily find the metric who makes that then an isometry. Yeah. Um, so this means if you have really some, if a vector field is essential, yeah, it has to have a singularity. Yeah. So therefore, if you assume now you have a conformal a killing field, which is zero um, at some point, x zero say, yeah, then he proved that either you can find a neighborhood yeah, around that point on which this vector field is inessential, meaning it's the killing vector field of a metric, really. Or if this is not the case, then the structure is already around that point, locally conformally equivalent to um, Euclidean space. Okay, and eta is inessential, uh, is eta is essential. Okay, yeah. So this is an infinitesimal version. In fact, implying also if you assume completeness, a special case of this global theorem I proved before for the connected components of these groups. Okay. okay, then among the, so if you start studying these, these um, essential um, conformal killing fields, then among them, there's also the special class of so-called strongly essential ones. So by which I mean the following. So um, a infinitesimal or killing vector field or infinitesimal conformal automorphism, um, we will say has a first order zero at a point if the flow fixes that point to first order, okay? Yeah, so, so it means the, the, the identity, as so it fixes the point and the, the tangent map of that flow at that point is the identity, okay? Um, then you see that strongly essential implies, of course, essential because I just told, told you before that, you know, that an isometry is already determined by its one jet at a point, yeah? So therefore, you know, something which fits something to first order is already the identity. Yeah, it's, yeah? so therefore strongly essential implies essential. Yeah? And then um, in fact, so uh, Francaise and Melnik have also started to study um, the conformal geometry of pseudo Romanian conformal structures. So where the metric is not positive definite. Um, and um, 
And they have shown that uh, if you have there a um, infinitesimal automorphism for such a structure with first order zero, so something strongly essential. Yeah, so the typical example of strongly essential I should maybe also say are these inversions. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. Um, and then as opposed to the Riemannian case, you, you don't get here that the geometry is locally equivalent to, you know, the, the model or conformally flat on an open neighborhood, but rather the weaker result that on an open set with the point in its closure. Yeah, so typically this open set, you can think of as, as the interior of a light cone, yeah, where this point sits in the middle. Yeah, this is how the sets look like, okay? And you can't do better than this in general without any further assumptions, okay? Um, <clears throat> and unless you assume real analyticity or something like this, yeah? Um, <clears throat> Okay, and then by now there are many similar results, known local and global ones, for instance, in the case of CR structures and also various types of parabolic geometries. Okay, generalizing also some techniques from the conformal case. Okay, okay, um, yeah. So now um, let me introduce this concept of a Catan connection. Okay, yeah, because we will, we will see how to use this to prove results like this. Okay. Okay, so so um, Catan geometries, yeah, were introduced, or what we now call Catan geometries, were introduced um, by Catan at the beginning of the 20th century as um, a common generalization of geometry in the sense of Felix Klein and Riemannian geometry, which were both proposed by them as generalizations of Euclidean geometry. Yeah. So let me remind you, so, so what is a geometry in the sense of Klein? So he said, well, a geometric structure for me means that you have a, a manifold, yeah, or a space, a manifold, yeah, together with a, a group, a Lie group, acting transitively from the left, yeah? So here, what is the geometric structure specified by such a action, yeah? Um, it's, it's precisely the study then of figures, properties, which are left invariant under the group. So in that program, this Erlangen program, a geometric structure is implicitly only specified by saying what its automorphisms are. That's the idea, yeah? Of course, if you fix a, fix a base point, yeah, then M can be identified with a homogeneous space where G is acting by left translation from the left, yeah, left multiplication, okay? Um, <clears throat> so you have this. But of course, this, uh, this notion, I mean, despite the fact that you can describe some non-Euclidean geometry with this, uh, it only allows, it's restricted to, of course, home, what we not now would call homogeneous geometric structures. Yeah? In particular, it also doesn't contain, you know, the study of rem general Riemannian manifolds. Yeah? So Catal now um, thought, let's think of geometric structure as follows. He said, a geometric structure for me should mean a structure which is only infinitesimally modeled on a homogeneous space via a Catan connection. So by infinitesimally modeled, I mean that only the tangent space of the manifold looks like the one of a homogeneous space. Okay. Okay, so so um so let's go back to the case of a remaining manifold. Yeah. So a remaining manifold can be of course seen as as a manifold whose tangent space looks at each point, yeah, um, like an Euclidean space, but that homo but of course this Euclidean space is varying from point to point, yeah, and we all know, I mean, if if my remaining manifold not only infinitesimally but really locally looks like Euclidean space, then certain integrability conditions have to be satisfied, and we all know what they are. They are given by the vanishing of the curvature. Of the Levi Civita connection by the Riemann curvature tensor that precisely describes you these, these integrability conditions. Yeah, so, so from that point of view, many manifold fits very nicely into this into this setting. Okay, a general one. Okay, now more precisely, what is a Catan connection? Okay, so so this is a notion you have for any Lie group and any closed subgroup. Yeah. Then one way to say this, which is not uh, the standard way you find in the literature, but it, it describes it in terms which, which are more known uh, is in terms of principal connections. It's like this, so Catan geometry of type GP yeah, on a manifold M yeah, is given to you by a G principal bundle together with a G principal connection yeah, 
everything is a tilde, and a reduction of structure group from that G bundle to a P principal bundle. Yeah, such that yeah the falling condition is satisfied. Namely, if you pull back this principal connection to the P to the G principal connection to the P principal bundle, then this induces you an isomorphism from the tangent space of M to this associated bundle here. Yeah, realizing this idea that, or making M look infinitesimally like a homogeneous space, because it makes each tangent space look like that one of a homogeneous space. Okay, by our G connector. Yeah, and usually what is called a Cartan connection is this pullback. Yeah, so often it's also defined as just a P principal bundle together with a one form with values in the algebra G such that certain properties are satisfied, but that's, that's equivalent what I'm describing. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, that, yes, sorry. Uh, let me think. So if, if G is GLN and P is a subgroup of GLN, I can think the G tilde, I can take for G tilde to be the frame bundle of M. Yeah. We are talking about the connection. So you're talking about a P structure together with a connection, which yeah, exactly. So, so if you want, you talk about a, a P principal bundle, yeah, together with not a P principal connection, but rather with with something which has values in this full Lie algebra G, not in P, and which is nicely compatible with the P action and its vertical. And the crucial thing is that it defines you this this isomorphism. Right, but after, I mean, at least in the case of P structures, once I have the connection on the, on this reduction, I can recover the B connection on, on the manifold, on, on the frame bundle, right? Uh, but you don't, I mean, the, the point is here, so, so I don't know exactly what you mean, but the, the point is that the, the, the con this omega, yeah, this pullback is not a connection, a P principal connection. So what's missing? Um... It, it, it has values in G and not in P. Oh, 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 oh I yeah? see. It. That's I why see. you have it. I, I usually call the P a G and the G is GLN. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so a model, the, the, the homogeneous model of this is, is of course, just the homogeneous case G mod P, where the P principal bundle is just G goes over the G mod P. Yeah, and um, the Cartan connection is uh, just the Maurer Cartan form. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, which you can also view as a, as a principal G connection on some extended bundle. Yeah, you extend G, you take G, cross G, and factor out the P action. Yeah? Anyway, so that's, that's, the, that's the model. And then that you have a notion of curvature, which is, yeah, the curvature of this principal connection, but strictly speaking, pulled back to um, this P bundle, yeah? And who's vanishing exactly tells you when your Cartan geometry is locally equivalent to its model. Yeah, so it measures how far you're away from, from looking like G mod P, okay? Sorry, Katarina, oh. I think. Yes. There was another question. Yes. Was there? Yeah, I was just wondering if you could ex explain this, the last condition again. Uh, which condition? The one about the, the pullback, how does that induce an isomorphism? Um, so, okay, so, so say, okay, so this pullback, yeah, is, is, a, is a one form on this, on this bundle with values in G, yeah? So otherwise put, it gives you a linear map, yeah, from the tangent space of, of uh, G, this curly G, to this little G, yeah? And the, the vertical bundle yeah, of this P-principle bundle is, is essentially the Lie algebra P. So you get, I mean, actually you get that this is an isomorphism. So from the tangent space of curly G to this little g, which induces an isomorphism by the projection to M to, from the tangent space of M to this bundle here. Yeah, yeah. So you should, uh, yeah. Remember that this this um, this op this omega has the property, yeah, that it reduces. So, so this is a p principal bundle. So you have a p 
principal action. And so you have also an infinitesimal action of this. So you have the fundamental vector field generated by elements in the Lie algebra of P. And the generators are reproduced by omega. I mean, this follows from you know, what you know from a, also a, a principal G connection. And, and therefore, you know, this gives you this isomorphism down to M to this. And then, so in what sense does so, that- So say, okay, say, okay. So you have an iso, so you have a map from the tangent space of curly G to, to this G, okay? And uh, so, which is actually an isomorphism at each point, yeah? And now the claim is just that if you, if you mod out by the vertical bundle, then this quotient is of course the tangent space of M. Yeah, and that quotient you can identify with G mod P because the vertical bundle is, is essentially, it's trivialized for P principal bundle by P, the Lie algebra, and omega reproduces the generators of this uh, vector fields generating that action. So in what sense does that uh, make your space, so oh, it's like the I guess the tangent spaces of your manifold look like the tangent space to G mod P. Is that yes. the idea? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Because remember, I mean, for the tangent space of G mod P, you have using exactly for the, the Mauer Caton form, yeah, the, the left, the fact that the tangent bundle of a Lie group is always um, can be uh, trivialized by left invariant vector fields, yeah, which you can capture by this, uh, by the Mauer Caton form, that um, you get always. Uh, an isomorphism of the tangent space of G mod P to G, now this curly G is just G, the group, cross P and G mod P. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is, okay, yeah. or if you see there's a point, at a point, just you have the, the tangent space of M at a point, is just like the Lie algebra of G mod P, which is the same how the, the, the tangent space of G mod P, the homogeneous space looks like. Okay? Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. Okay, the curvature then uh, tells you exactly how far you're away from being in the homogeneous space. Okay, yeah. Okay, so prominent examples of this uh, are, are the following. Um, so, so first of all, we have many manifolds. In this case, the, the many manifolds can be described as torsion-free Cartan geometries of type Euclidean group, mod orthogonal group, and here this equivalence is just a reformulation of things you know, namely. You take as your P bundle is the autonomous frame bundle, yeah, and for the the the, uh, the Cartan connection is just you take the Levi Civita connection, but plus the 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 one the R n valued one form which describes you the the reduction of the frame bundle to the orthogonal frame bundle. Otherwise, put what what gives you the metric, yeah. So so this Cartan connection just is a sum of the Cartan connection plus, that's why it doesn't have values in ON, plus the, you remember the reduction in terms of a form, meaning the metric. And in this way, you get a one-to-one -one correspondence between many manifolds and torsion-free Cartan geometries of that type, okay? But as I said, in this case, you know, it's not that you, you know, I mean, it's basically just a reformulation of things you know, and, um, and so, yeah, the, yeah okay. But, but now, if you look at conformal manifolds, they can be um, described as yeah, normal Cartan geometries of that type. So where you have some uh, orthogonal group of some Lorentzian vector space. Um, and uh, where P is here the stabilizer of a, of a null line. Yeah? So otherwise put this diffeomorphy to the sphere. And, um, and this is also this SO is then the group of, of conformal transformations on the sphere with the Standard conformal structure. Okay, so we have this or projective oh, sorry, manifold. What does normal mean here? Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, normal. So, so the point is, so you can construct in the first instance. You you can construct many, say, Cartan connections of the type which induce you uh, the given conformal structure. So you need some normalization condition. I mean, similar. Think of similar as with with a many manifold. There exist many metric connections, and but. The normalization condition there would be to ask for torsion freeness and then it's unique. Here you need some other normalization condition. We make that a canonical unique object to get really an equivalence of categories. 
Yeah, it's just something, some condition like this, because you have too many, yeah, which induce the same structure. Okay. Um, yeah, another example, a standard one is a projective manifold. So here you, the, the geometric structure consists of um, geodesics of an, um, of an affine connection, few this unparameterized curves. Yeah, so generalizing the projective structure on the projective space given by the projective lines. <clears throat> um, yeah, again, they can be described as Catan geometries. And let me say that the, the conformal and projective case are two prototypical examples of what is called a parabolic geometry. Yeah, so these are Catan geometries modeled on homogeneous spaces where G is a semi-simple Lie group and P is a parabolic subgroup. So otherwise put G mod P are flag varieties. Yeah, so P is, to, is the stabilizer of some flag in a vector space. Yeah, so it's matrix form in some sort of upper block diagonal matrix. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, what else did I want to say? Ah, yeah, okay. So one thing I wanted to say about this is that, so in these cases, yeah, for parabolic geometries or the underlying structures of parabolic geometries, so like the conformal and projective case, yeah, they are to establish this equivalence is, is, is much more difficult. Yeah. Um, so, so for these structures, the problem is that you don't have a distinguished connection on the on the tangent bundle anymore. Yeah. Um, but rather you um, have a connection on a subbundle of second order frame bundle. Yeah. And um, and uh, which gives you this Catan connection. And then even to normalize this and so on is much more difficult. And also you don't know a priori when you start with a conformal manifold, you know, whether it will be the subbundle of a second order frame bundle or a third order frame bundle or the, whatever. Yeah, so this is this some sort of prolongation procedure you have to do yeah? as I described with the infinitesimal automorphisms. So that's why typically, yeah, when you, when you describe a geometric structure equivalently as a Catan geometry, that's really the result of a really, really non-trivial theorem and not you know, just some simple reformulation of things. Yeah, that's really- but Does this that, depend? Yes. Sorry, does this, uh, how many steps you need in the pro prolongation? Does it depend on the structure of the unipotent radical perhaps or the uh, parabolic yes, subgroup? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, yeah, it depends whether you see things. So, so uh, in some sense, yeah, so the, the, that's right, that's right, yeah. The best thing is actually to think for parabolic geometries in general in some sort of weighted jet calculus, yeah, in which case it would be then several steps. Otherwise for parabolic geometries, you can show that for normal jets, it's always a, sits inside a second order frame bundle. But yeah, but yeah, it, it exactly has to do also with that. It has to do with this, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, that's how you also get this group, because if you look at a conformal manifold, I mean, that's given by, okay, a conformal structure is the same as a reduction of structure group of the frame bundle to the conformal group, yeah? But, but as I said, I mean, you don't have a connection on the conformal frame bundle, like in the Riemannian case. So the question is, what is even the group which, you know, which matters? And it turns out it's this parabolic subgroup where, um, where just the Levy factor of this group is this, um, conformal orthogonal group, yeah? But somehow to get this group, it somehow comes out of prolongation, yeah? And how, how um, yeah, the degree of the unipotent radical somehow matters how much work you have to do, yeah? <clears throat> okay, um, okay, let me fix some, uh, so how much do, uh, okay, uh, okay, I'm doing very badly in time here. Um, okay, so, okay, let me, uh, fix um, a, uh, for some notation for parabolic geometries yeah, later. So if you have a, if you have a semi-simple Lie group and parabolic subgroup, then the parabolic subalgebra um, always induces you a filtered Lie algebra structure on, on G. Yeah, so here the G, G0 is just P and G1 is the nil radical of P and the filtration on the nil radical, yeah, is just exactly the lower central series of this nil radical. So otherwise put K is the degree of nil potency um, of, the, of the nil radical, okay? Then of course, once you have an object like this, you can form the associated graded of this, yeah, which is then a graded Lie algebra. And, um, and you can always, not canonically, but you can always identify this with G itself, yeah? 
this, this is this is true for these for these structures, and yeah, I will use this notation. So p plus for the for the positive part, p minus for the negative part, and yeah, g zero is the the Levy part of the parabolic subalgebra. Um, yeah, and that the corresponding group I will denote by g zero. Okay, which is yeah. Um, okay, so now if you have a parabolic geometry, um, then can I ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is this this filtration is actually a grading and you can get it if you take like for example a semi-simple element that determines the parabolic and then you look at the eigenvalues uh, so so okay so this this grading i mean let's think in grading i mean this is um so of course parabolic sub algebras um you if you fix a Catan sub algebra and a system of positive roots the, the conjugate class of parabolic sub algebras are um uh, are determined by um, subsets of simple roots, right? And 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 then this grading here you get by okay you 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 decompose each root into simple roots, yeah, and count. So as I said, a parabolic subalgebra co corresponds to a subset. So you count only the, you add up the coefficients of the elements which correspond to your parabolic subalgebra, and then you get this decomposition. Yeah, but so like we all described in terms of so these are all certain types of root spaces, yeah, sums of root spaces, these grading components. But you like you could choose an element in the in the carton that, uh, like for the ones that you want to keep in the levy, it vanishes there, but on the other ones, it's, it's like. Yeah, you can you you can actually yeah you can find an element uh, in here whose um, eigenspace decomposition is exactly this. Okay. Yeah, which is then you can call this the grading element. Yeah, okay. Actually, a choice of such a grading element gives you, you can see this has given you such an isomorphism. Anyway, but somehow what you have without any choices is really the filtration. That's why I introduced it first. Yeah, so there you don't have to choose. This grading depends on, on the choices uh, of Catal subalgebra and so on. Of course, all these things are conjugate and so on, but, but this is what you have without, you know, any kind of choices of. Okay. Um, by the yeah. way, yes, we are not really strict on time, so it's it's okay if you go over time a bit. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because I'm somehow, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm. Yeah. Okay. Thank Just you. Don't worry about the time. <laughs> okay. Okay. I. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So. So just to give you an idea what kind of geometric structures you're describing in more conventional terms when you talk about a parabolic geometry is, is let's see what a parabolic geometry induces you. So suppose we have a parabolic geometry. So here, this curly G is not a P principal bundle and omega this, this pulled back form, yeah, the, which is the, what is called the Catan connection. Then, okay, so from this isomorphism, yeah, here, and the filtration on G I just described, which is peer invariant, you get automatically a filtration on the on the tangent bundle of your manifold M. Okay. Um, now I will assume now that this this filtration is regular. That's a condition you can describe also in terms of curvature of the of this parabolic geometry, which means should mean that this uh, is a filtered manifold in the sense that the Lie bracket is compatible. Um, the, the, uh, sorry, the, the filtration is compatible with the Lie bracket of vector fields. Yeah, in a sense. And if you form the associated graded, yeah, which is a nil potent Lie algebra at each point, yeah, where the algebra structure comes from the Lie bracket, that this is isomorphic to this G minus from before this nil potent Lie algebra for each point. Yeah, so you have filtered manifold where people would say whose symbol algebra at each point is G minus. And the other bit of, of structure you get is. Of course, then you can look at the frame bundle of this associated grade bundle. Yeah, this is structure group. Yeah, exactly all the grading preserving Lie algebra isomorphism of G minus. Yeah, because these are the fibers. And what you also get from the Catan is a reduction of structure group of that frame bundle to G zero. Yeah, remember G zero is is a group whose joint action. Yeah, it's just some subgroup of the parabolic subgroup. Which is acting by grading preserving Lie algebra isomorphism on G minus. Okay. Yeah, so you get a reduction like this. And this is typically, this can be, this reduction gives you some additional geometric structure on this lowest filtration component. Yeah. So otherwise put, 
so there, there exist several cases. So there's the case where if P has, whether if the unipotent radical is a billion, yeah, then K is one and the filtration is trivial. So there's nothing there. And then you're talking just about um, a reduction of structure group to G0 of the frame bundle. So the case you have, could have, can have, should have in mind is the conformal case. So G0 is here the conformal group, yeah? Just first order G structure. Um, and then there exist other classes where the reduction is trivial and you just get a filtered manifold structure. Yeah? And then there exist mixed things where typically, for instance, for each simple G, you can find there's a unique parabolic such that this filtration is a contact manifold. Yeah? And the reduction is additional structure on the contact distribution, like a complex structure giving you a CR and, and things like this. Okay. So that's the, the structures you're getting. For these structures, um, using uh, you know uh, by non-prolongation procedures, it is known that that in almost all cases, I meaning for almost all pairs of GNP, yeah, um, whenever you have a regular infinitesimal flex structure of type GP, which is the data here I described in these two points, yeah, um, then it uniquely determines you a regular normal parabolic geometry of type GP. So in this sense, you get an equivalence of categories between regular normal parabolic geometries and structures like that. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and also one word just to formulate some theorems, which yeah, uh, uh, some theorems in a more um, in the correct form. You don't need to know the details about this. I just want to have the formulation right on the slides. Let me say that these normalization conditions, which is a condition of the curvature. Um, that gives rise for normal parabolic geometries to a simpler curvature quantity, uh, which is called the harmonic curvature, um, which is some sort of sub quotient of the, of the full curvature, doesn't matter. But the, the important property for us is vanishing of that is equivalent to vanishing of this harmonic, vanishing of the curvature is equivalent to vanishing of this harmonic curvature. So it's still an obstruction, complete obstruction to local flatness of the structure. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so in the conformal case, this would be the Weyl curvature. Yeah, conformal Weyl curvature. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so, okay, so then, yeah, I should maybe, okay, so then you can show that an immediate consequence, yeah, of, of the fact that you have described your geometric structure as a Cartan geometry is that its automorphism group, yeah, which is now the bundle automorphism preserving that connection, that this is a finite dimensional Lie group, yeah, um, whose dimension is bounded by the dimension of G. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're preserving a connection, so yeah, so therefore this follows um, kind of immediately from this, okay? Um, that's what you're getting. So that's already a new non-trivial consequence for your geometric structure. There you see that associating a Cartan connection is something non-trivial going on here. Yeah, a priori you, you don't you don't know things like this. Okay. Um, and having this theorem, you you actually easily can describe the theorems I mentioned, uh, prove the theorems I described at the beginning about classifying the Riemannian and conformal manifolds with maximum possible automorph largest possible dimension of automorphism group, because of course you have that. If you that any automorphism preserves also this curvature, yeah, the curvature because it's a natural object associated to your structure, and if you have a large automorphism group who preserves this curvature tensor, then often this implies already that the curvature has to be zero, or in the Riemannian case, it implies that you have to have a manifold of constant curvature. Yeah. Um, okay. I should. So how much time? Okay. Okay. You can prove other results, but this I wanted to say. So how much time do I have? Still have? Um, uh, well, officially, I think 10 minutes, but as I said, you can. We can okay, okay. So then I will, okay, maybe 10 minutes I have officially. Okay, yeah, okay. So then, yeah, maybe I will. Okay. Um, okay, so now um, let's. I, I, I mentioned these results at the beginning of conformal structures to somehow now see how, to which extent are they true for parabolic geometries or can be even formulated for general parabolic geometries. So these notions of being essential and strongly essential generalize naturally to parabolic geometries. I mean, for essential, this is a bit harder to, to explain, yeah, because there I would need to introduce more theory um, to say what that means in this case. Yeah, but strongly essential, of course, makes sense as on the notes, yeah, because strongly essential was the same that you have a you have a vector field 
um, preserving the geometric structure whose flow fixes a point to first order. Yeah, so that's, yeah, of course, it can make sense by any geometric structure of this notion. Okay. So now uh, for parabolic geometries, yeah, you can show that um, this is similar as for conformal structures that in fact any automorphism already determined by its two jet at a point. This has something to do with the, this, this bundle where you have the Cartan connection is, is, is a sub bundle of a second order frame bundle. Okay, it's P bundle. And things where strongly essential things in general do exist, you can show that they always exist on all these, on the whole homogeneous models of these geometries. Yeah, so by which, yeah, so strongly essential means that it has vanishing one jet, but it's not zero, it's, it's non zero two jet. Okay. So now our natural question is given what we learned in the conformal case is that, so given a parabolic geometry, what kind of geometric restriction do you have from the existence of a strongly essential flow? When does this imply maybe flatness again on an open set having the fixed point in its closure, okay? And there has been techniques uh, developed to study these questions, yeah, by Chap and Melnick and Melnick myself, um, generalized ideas from the conformal setting. And um, so for simplicity, let's assume that we are talking about a one graded parabolic geometry, which means the nil radical of my parabolic is a billion, yeah, to make things a little bit simpler, yeah? So the underlying structure is just certain types of reductions of structure group of the frame bundle, yeah, like the conformal case, okay? Okay, so then suppose I have an infinitesimal automorphism of that underlying of this geometric structure, then I will denote always by tilde the, or I will denote by tilde the, the lift to an automorphism of the cartology, corresponding Cartan geometry. Yeah. So remember, we have these equivalents of categories of, say, yeah, for instance, conformal structures and certain types of Cartan geometries, which means in particular any automorphisms of the conformal structure gives rise to an automorphism of the corresponding Cartan geometry. Yeah? And I will denote this by eta tilde. And the, and the flows, the local flows by phi, til, phi t and tilde phi. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, um, if you look at this vector field eta tilde, so that's this infinitesimal automorphism, so that's a vector field on this curly G. Um, and you uh, compose this with the Cartan connection, yeah. Um, then you get a map from curly G to this Lie algebra G, which is p equivariant, yeah, that follows from. Yeah, properties of omega and also of the fact that this this vector field is of course p invariant. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then you can see, okay, so this this vector field eta has a zero at x zero say, if and only if, yeah, for any um, point in the fiber of this Cartan bundle over x zero, if you evaluate it at such eta at such a point and apply omega that is lies in P. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, this is has also to do with this, remember this isomorphism from the tangent bundle to um, uh, the G mod P, yeah. And then what means having a first order zero for eta? That can be, an, and hence for eta to be strongly essential. That means that's the case if and only if this um, not lies only in P, but in P plus in the nil radical, which, I assume now, yeah, it's it's a billion actually. Yeah. So, okay. So that's that's two conditions which you get very easy playing around with these things. Okay. So then also, if you look at the p orbit, which I already know by alpha of this element z here, yeah. So this element in p plus you're getting from this first order zero, then this is actually independent of the choice of your element in the fiber. So this is really an, a geometric invariant of this of this zero. Yeah, so you get it. So depending on how many p orbits you have here, you get different types of singularities of your vector field. Yeah. So let me quickly say in the, in the say in, so for the projective case, yeah. So these p orbits, since we are talking about yeah p's with with um, a billion unipotent radical, um, they are the same as the g zero orbits. So in the projective case, you're talking about just g zero orbits, yeah, of g l n r on the dual of the standard representation. So you have just non one non-trivial orbit. In the case of pseudo-conformal structures, you have the conformal group acting on RPQ. Yeah. Um, in this case, you have three non-trivial orbits depending on you know, whether your elements are space-like, time-like, or, or null. 
Yeah, and this gives you different, um, yeah, geometric types of zeros. Okay. So now the idea of, of studying these things and proving rigidity results as for the conformal cases based on a comparison with the homogeneous model. Yeah. So, okay, suppose we have a strongly essential um, infinitesimal automorphism eta. Yeah, the zero is at x zero. And we choose a point in the fiber of the Caton bundle um, and denote by z the corresponding element we get in P plus. Okay. Then we look at G mod P, and there we look at the right invariant vector field, yeah, generating on G by this z in P plus. Yeah, or on G, respectively, the projection down to G mod P. Yeah, so vector field on that. Then that is is um that is a vector field which has a first order zero at um, the orbit through the identity, yeah, and whose flow is of course just the Lie um, Lie group uh, the Lie algebra exponential or Lie group exponential um, acting from the left on G mod p. Yeah, so this is somehow our model for for such a vector field which is singularity. Okay. So now remember on G mod P you have exponential coordinates. Yeah. So so given just by the exponential map. Yeah. So if you look at the map from G minus to G mod P, where you map X to just E to the power X, but project it out to P, then gives you a, a local diffeomorphism uh, from a neighborhood of zero in G minus to a neighborhood of this this fixed point of our R, of our vector field RZ, yeah, this EP. Yeah, so you have these, these coordinates, of course. Okay. And now you can, in these coordinates, there exists some special direction you can immediately um, uh, um, somehow uh, pick up. Namely, okay, so if you look at elements x in G minus, yeah, yeah, then which commute with z, yeah, then of course these give you points, yeah, who on G mod P, yeah, or in fact, whole curves of points um, which get pointwise fixed by the flow of this, um, this model vector field. Yeah. So in fact, depending on the dimension of this Z of Z, you get a whole submanifold containing um, the orbit through the identity of fixed points of this vector field R of Z. Yeah, so whole manifold is fixed. Yeah. Another special um, points in these coordinates are the ones where you take an X such that if you take X, the commutator of Z and X and Z, that X, A and Z form an SL2 triple. Yeah. Why is this? Because if you look now how E to the power TZ acts on E S X, yeah, then it does this in this form. Yeah. Where this node here, where this part here lies completely in P. So if you project down to P, what you see is that the flow just reparameterizes this exponential curve. So otherwise put, if you let T go to infinity, what this flow does, it contracts for S bigger than zero into the fixed point. You get some sort of contracting dynamics, okay? So now the point is, the observation is that if you have a Caton connection, you have also an exponential map, yeah? Giving from the coming from this Cartan connection, which um, gives rise to local coordinates around the singularity of that infinitesimal automorphism, again with values in G minus. Yeah. And now these, these sets Z of Z and T of Z, yeah, I can look under this exponential map what they give you on M now. Yeah, and you can see that the action of the flow of these curves, these exponential curves that you get there, behaves exactly in the same way as in the model. Yeah, so you get this locally in these coordinates, the dynamics look the same, kind of. Yeah, so more specifically, you can see okay, if you from this set C of Z, you get a whole submanifold through that through that higher order zero of first order zeros of the same geometric type as this singularity, a whole manifold fixed, depending on this dimension. And this dimension of this thing just depends on the pair G mod P and the type of the singularity, the geometric type. It's a purely algebraic thing, yeah? Similarly, you get a family of, of distinguished curves emanating from the fixed point coming from these SL2 triples, which get all just reparameterized in this way by the flow, 
So they get contracted into the fixed point. Okay. And um, yeah, um, yeah, okay. And from this now, you can, because the curvature yeah, is invariant, of course, under these flows of these infinitesimal automorphisms and p equivariant, you get immediately restrictions of this curve. Um, if you restrict the, the, cur sorry, the curvature to these curves, you get restrictions for the values of, this, of the curvature from this. Because, because of these contracting dynamics, I mean, this curvature is smooth, has to remain smooth. So you get that it's not allowed to blow up. So from this, you get immediately has to be bounded, you know, under a certain group acting on it. And so you get restrictions on the values it can have. Okay. And looking also at higher derivatives, uh, we were able to show that, say, in the case of a, of a parabolic geometry, one graded parabolic geometry, a normal one, also called irreducible. Um, with G simple, and if you have an infinitesimal automorphism with a first order zero at x zero of some geometric type, then you have this distinguished class of curves emanating from the fixed point, which get contracted. And you can show that the harmonic curvature always vanishes along these curves. Yeah? Um, in particular, this proves also that your, any infinitesimal automorphism for is at a point where the curvature doesn't vanish is determined by its one jet at a point. Yeah, which is also something more algebraic proof was given by Kulpikov and T for all parabolic geometries. Okay. And in this way, we were able to prove some related results for irreducible parabolic geometries, namely, okay, so if you say have say from this theorem, if you have if these curves fill up an open set, yeah, then you get immediately that the geometry vanishes on an open set having this fixed point in its closure. Yeah. Um, how many curves you get really, again, depend on the type of singularity and the pair G mod P. Yeah, it's a purely algebraic thing, how, how many you get. Um, and, um, and sometimes also in the cases where you have a big fixed point set, yeah, um, like this, this manifold N is very big, um, we were able to show that, yeah, if, if you want the correct formulation, either alpha is in a minimal non-trivial orbit uh, in P plus uh, or alpha is the open orbit, um, then we can show that the geometry is flat on an open set with the fixed point in disclosure. Okay, so this uh, is generally some results of this. Yeah, and in particular, in some cases, yeah, like projective and so on, I mean, it exists just one orbit, so then you get flatness um, on an open set, even in this case, locally around the neighborhood of the point. Okay, so maybe I just, okay, I finish by saying now a few words about some global results, um, but uh, yeah, they are. I would need to introduce a whole other, uh, yeah, also other methods, which I won't have time, but let me just say the results. So, um, so in the projective setting um, and what is called the C projective setting, um, there exists also by now um, analogs, or there is an analog in the projective case of this conformal Lishnerovich conjecture in the projective case. Yeah? So this goes like this. So suppose you have a Riemannian manifold, yeah, and you look at the projective structure induced by the levi civita connection of that metric. Yeah. So the structure is given by the geodesics viewed as unparameterized curves. Um, then you, you can look at the following groups. Of course, you have the isometry group, which sits into the group of FN transformations, which means the transformations who preserve the levi civita connection, yeah, but not necessarily the metric. And this sits inside. The, the group of projective transformation, which preserves the class of connections, yeah, right? And by subscript zero, we denote the connected components. Then the projective Ishnerovich conjecture was that if your manifold is complete and connected, um, then the group, the connected components of the group of efferent transformations coincides with the connected component of the group of projective transformations. Unless uh, your manifold is isometric to a finite quotient of the sphere. Okay. And this is a conjecture which was proved by Vladimir Matveyev um, back some time ago. And we have then studied um, the analogs of this conjecture in the case of um, yeah, C projective structures induced by Kähler metrics. So if you have a, a Kähler metric, then um, the, you have a notion of projective equivalence, um, which is based on a, on a larger notion of curves than just geodesics. Yeah, so you can call them, you know, they're called J-planar curves. And, um, and there we were able to prove a similar result. Um, 
for um, complete connected Kähler manifolds, which in a compact case was first proved by yeah, um, Matveev and collaborators. And, uh, and we were also then to show something about actually the full groups where you're not dealing anymore with flows, but with discrete groups of um, transformations. So in this case, we were able to show that if you have a connected complete Kähler manifold, um, which is not isometric to um, CPN um, with triplets of being studiometric, then um, the index of the group of FN transformation, the group of um, C projective transformations at most two. Yeah, and this uses also methods. So the point here is that for a projective structure, yeah, um, the question whether the geodesics come from a metric rather than just from a FN connection, yeah, that's controlled by, again, a linear overdetermined system of PDEs, yeah. Um, and, um, and so meaning say, if you have a C projective transformation, a projective transformation, which is not affine, yeah, then it means that you have, say in the projective case, you have two metrics here, yeah, um, which, um, uh, yeah, then you have immediately two metrics which are not affine equivalent. Yeah. And you can show from this, I mean, this uses on one hand metrics from Cartan geometry, but also you can show that you have actually always in this case, um, some, Poisson commuting integrals for the geodesic flow. Yeah, so in this case, in the C projective case, you get from two C projective equivalent metrics, which are not FN equivalent, you get Poisson commuting linear and quadratic integrals for the geodesic flow. Yeah, and so you can use also um, yeah, methods from integrable systems to, to deal with these things. And, and this is what these theorems also use. Yeah, this is another ingredient coming into this in this case, which is more metric, geometric, or symplectic in, the, in this case. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, I will finish. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you again for the invitation. Yeah. And if uh, yeah, are there any questions? Um,